Today on Mean Brews, we're covering the German style of Märzen. This is also called Oktoberfest. It's one of my favorite beer styles, a wonderful malty beer. And there's some a few surprises here as we go through the data, so let's jump right into it. I've got 23 winning Märzen recipes, 16 gold, 6 silver, and 1 award winning. And my data set goes all the way back to 1993. So a good historical representation of the style. Surprisingly, there were no best of show recipes. I wonder if this beer just doesn't stand, stand out in the second round competition. The BJCP style is 6A, an elegant malty German amber lager with a clean, rich, toasty, and bready malt flavor, restrained bitterness, and a dry finish that encourages another drink. As far as the style stability, this one surprisingly is, is evolving quite a bit from uh, 1993 to today. And along with that evolution, we see a, quite a bit of style uh, variation as it is evolving. And we'll go through that as we go through the presentation. The original gravities, the BJCP range is 1.054 to 1.060, and we see a big, big range here. Almost on the mean, the average is 1.056. However, we had low examples all the way down to 1.048 and all the way up to 1.062. Didn't really matter if you were outside of the range. People are winning all over the place. Right away, we see some of the evolution here. As we gravitate towards 2020 from 1993, we see a decline in the original gravity that people use for this style. Highest original gravity is 1.062, the lowest is 1.048, and it has gravitated about four points uh, over the years in original gravity. For IBUs, again, we see a huge range of to 15 to 27, well outside of the BJC acceptable limits. Uh, the, the IBUs are in a, a bit on the higher side from the, from the mean of the BJCP range, so I would aim for somewhere around 22, 23 IBUs for this style. Again, this one's declining as well. So from around the 2000s to today, the IBUs that people are using for this style has declined to right around 20 IBUs. The ratio of IBUs over original gravity points, we've talked about this in previous videos, this is also declining, which, meaning, which means we're going to a more malty style of beer versus hop bitterness or hop flavor. Um, not unexpected, this is a, supposed to be a multi style of beer, but it is unique. As for the color, um, people are, are deferring towards the lower end of the BJCP range, even extending down to 6. Um, so aim for somewhere around 9.8, 10 uh, in the SRM scale. When you look at the average uh, malt types used for this style, 93% of the grist was the base malt. 5.5% crystal, 1.4% toast, and 0.1% roast, probably just for color. Um, this again is evolving, and we'll go through how it's evolved over, the, over time, and what I'm going to recommend in my final uh, uh, recipe. Looking at base malt, if we go back a slide, 93% was the average. However, this is increasing over time. Uh, people are using more base malt, less specialty malts to get a cleaner, uh, less robust uh, crystal or toast flavors. Um, not so much toast, because you'll see the Munich and uh, Vienna malts they are using are increasing. Um, however, this is notable, going from 84% base malt to a lot of 100%. I think there's five 100% base malt recipes, and right there in the high 90s. Yeah, the average is right here at 93. And today's recipes uh, in the past five, ten years are above or at the average. Percentage of crystal malts, we had a peak of around 16% crystal malts. And you'll see since about 2005 on, nobody went above 8% on the crystal malts. So this is definitely one that's declining as well. Uh, crystal malts um, typically use their German crystals, um, Cara, Vienna, Cara Vienna and Cara Munich uh, type malts. Again, the average is right at about 5.5, but you'll see since right around 2010, people have kind of stayed at that or below it. When you look at the base malts, big ranges for the three top Pilsner, 
uh, Munich and Vienna. People are using different combinations of these three malts. Most prominent is Pilsner. 87% uh, of the recipes used a Pilsner malt at an average rate of 46% of the grist. Uh, Vienna was next, 82, I'm sorry, that's Munich. Uh, Munich, 82% of the recipes used in Munich at an average rate of 35% of the grist. And Vienna, 61% of the recipes used a Vienna malt at an average rate of 39% of the grist. Had some two other malts, uh, one recipe had rye and one had wheat, but there's they're notable blips, or not notable blips, and I would ignore those in your recipe. Looking at the base malts, another where another area where they're tremendously decreasing. So Pilsner, I think the average was, uh, let's see, going back. Pilsner average was right around 46%. However, when you look at it over time, it, this is reduced to around 20% of the grist. Uh, recipes are using less and less Pilsner, more and more of the Munich, uh, as you'll see in the next slide, uh, to get the dark colors and flavors they're looking for for this style. As I said before, Munich is again increasing from 0% all the way up to, you know, some recipes using almost 100% of Munich malts. Um, so this is another area where we're gonna, we're, my recipe is gonna reflect the latest data, the latest trends rather than historical uh, style. Vienna didn't move much. It was right around 20 to 30% of the grist. So I didn't plot that one. As far as crystal malts, the most prominent crystal malt was medium crystal. This will be a Care Munich 1, 2, or 3 in your Weinmann malts, uh, or Care Munich in your Irex or other, other German style malts. 44% of the recipes used a crystal malt at an average rate of 6.5% of the grist. The next highest was a light crystal, Care Vienna, is what I would use. 30% uh, of the recipes used a Care Vienna, average rate of 3.8% of the grist. Care Pills or Dextrin malt, 22% of the recipes used a Care Pills. Average of about 4.5 to 5% of the grist. Um, the last one is a dark crystal. Only two recipes use a dark crystal, a big range there, but the average was 5.1% of the grist. There was one recipe that used special B, right at about 1%. I wouldn't recommend using in this style. Toasted and roast malts, not a big pr uh, proportion of the malt bills used them. Less than 15% of the recipes did, but we will go through them. Victory was the highest. 13% of the recipes used the Victory Malt at an average of 6.4% of the grist. Next highest was Aromatic. 13% uh, of the recipes used an Aromatic, very similar to, to Victory, at an average rate of 3.1. And Chocolate Malt, 9%, I think that's two recipes, used a Chocolate Malt, an average of 1.5% of the grist. There's some others, Melanoidin, um, Home Toasted Malt, uh, was on there. One recipe used that and Black Patent was another. This is just for color. So if you get the color you like, don't add any roasted malts is what I'd recommend. Uh, as for bittering hops, another clear standout, Haller Tower Middle Fru. 52% of the recipes use this for its bittering hop and, that, and that's what I would recommend. Some other German and other non-German styles, Centennial, um, Horizon, uh, the, these uh, I wouldn't recommend. Stick with the German style of bittering hops and Hallertauer Millefru is what I'm going to recommend for bittering. Uh, flavor hops, 65% of the recipes use flavor hops, so I will recommend using a flavor hop for this style. Uh, Hallertauer Millefru, again, the clear winner. Over 50% of the recipes, or 50% of those that used it, used uh, Haller hops. Uh, only 35% of the recipes. Uh, Tet, Sots, Cascade, and uh, Styrian Golians rounded out the, the rest of the, the hop bill for flavor. Aroma hops, only 13% used aroma hops. I'm not going to recommend for this style to use an aroma hop or related to any late edition hop whatsoever. Um, but what was used was mostly German except for the one recipe that used Cascade. As for the rate of hop additions, um, I'm not going to recommend using aroma hops, but uh, I will report what they what the rates that they did use. For the flavor hops, uh, 60, again, 65% of the recipes used a flavor hop. An average rate of 0 0.13 ounces per gallon, very low. Somewhere around, if, on a five gallon batch, that's like half to uh, three quarter ounce. Um, and for the aroma hops, only two recipes used uh, aroma hops at an average rate, or sorry, three recipes at an average rate of 0 0.16 ounce per gallon. I'm not gonna re recommend using those uh, for this style. 
the yeast used was pretty split, surprisingly. I was expecting the uh, 2206 to be the leader, and it is, but there were some other notable lager yeasts used. Um, this is an Oktoberfest yeast designed for that, and my favorite, um, 820 and 2206. I know it reported in the German Pilsner that um, the Mr. Malty website reports uh, a different yeast to be uh, 820, uh, 21, 24, and 830 to 2206. But I did contact White Lab since then, and they have confirmed to me that 820 is indeed the Vine Spawn 206, and 830 is the 3470. So, German uh, recipe uh, that I present, the Pilsner recipe I presented last week or two weeks ago, um, I, um, I'll put a correction down in the notes on that one. Uh, also, 838, surprisingly, not a lot of people use 838, but this is 22% uh, of recipes were successful using this yeast. Um, this is, a, a, I think, a university strain uh, of yeast, not owned by a brewery. Einger, 13%, uh, the Oktoberfest blend from Y-Yeast. August Shell, which I think is American lager yeast, and then White Labs 920, which is the old Bavarian lager. That's a great strain, but uh, again, stick with uh, probably these three and you'll be okay. I highly recommend 820 for this style. The mash type, 44% of the recipes uh, used an infusion mash, and the majority of them use some sort of step mash. Uh, only 21 in 5 recipes used a decoction mash for this style. For the mash rests, I um, have this backwards, uh, 124 Fahrenheit for the average protein rest and about 15% of the rest or 50% of the recipes uh, used a protein rest. So I will recommend a protein rest at the uh, end of this video um, for about 25 minutes was the average, probably quite a long protein rest. Um, for alpha rest, 153, big uh, steep curve right there at 153 or 67 Celsius for 60 minutes was the average. Boil duration, the average was 73 minutes. We did have a 120 minute boil. Um, this was an older recipe, so I'm, I'm recommending sticking 60 to 90 minutes. 75 minutes seemed to be about the, the, the mean here. The boil time again is going down. You'll see that 120 minute right here in the early 2000s. Uh, people are just do, doing the 60 minute boil here recently. So, um, you know, I, I'm not going to recommend anything higher than 75 minutes for this style. Fermentation temperature. Um, the blue curve is all of the data. We did have a, a recipe that was fermented at 70. That's still one. And one that's fermented all the way down to 45. When you take out the high-low, you get a much steeper curve, which I think is where we should report. And that average was right at uh, 49 Fahrenheit or 9 degrees Celsius. The fermentation time, um, Mersin is supposed to be brewed in March. That's what uh, the German uh, word for March is. Um, and uh, lagered over the summer in the caves is what the story tells you. Uh, I think people tried to replicate that early on. Uh, however, people are, are using shorter duration ferments and uh, long, uh, shorter lagering times recently and, and having success with those recipes. Carbonation average was 2.6 volumes, uh, so uh, I won't report the standard deviation. This was a pretty tight curve, so that's about where I'll recommend for this style. And we're on to the recipe. So starting at the top, um, I split my Munich into two. I, I used, uh, I think, one, one fifth or four fifths uh, Munich one and uh, one fifth Munich two. So I have 40% Munich one and 10% Munich two. Right there towards those, you know, latest trends of 50% Munich malt, part of the grist. I'm at 28% Vienna malt uh, and 20% Pilsner. This all lines up with the latest trends for the style. And I threw in a little uh, Care Munich, Care Munich 2 from Weiermann, uh, just to give it some of that, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of touch of something else. The uh, bittering hops, I used Haller Middlefru, 17 or about 18 uh, IBUs worth. And then I added 0.15 ounce per gallon or 1.1, I don't know if that conversion is correct, 0.15 ounces per gallon of middle fruit to give you about 5 IBUs at 15 minutes. I'm going to use the White Labs 820 or the Y-East uh, 2206. I'm going to shoot for original gravity 1.056 and right at about 22, 23 IBUs. There's only two recipes that reported water chemistry, so I don't have anything to report there. 
but I would choose an amber malty um, water profile from Brune Water for this style. I'm going to do a step mash at 124 Fahrenheit or 51 Celsius for 25 minutes. Then I'm going to bump it up to 153 or 67 Celsius for 60 minutes. And then I'm going to sparge as usual and I'm going to boil for 75 minutes. That was right at the average. I'm going to chill to 48. I'm going to oxygenate and pitch. This is a lager pitch, so make a big starter. I'm not going to give cell counts. Um, I think you can do your own calculations with the online calculators. I'm going to ferment at 49 and then raise to 56 as it slows down. I had a comment last week that my diacetyl rest is not high enough. Um, I have never had a problem with diacetyl raising uh, more than 5 degrees uh, above the primary fermentation temperature. Let me know in the comments if you disagree. I would really like to hear back if... Uh, you know, you think that we should be in the 60s or even the low 70s for our diacetyl rest, but uh, had some good advice from a, uh, a great lager brewer in our club, and using that advice, I've never had a problem. Uh, I'm going to cold crash. I'm going to lager it for one month at 34 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to keg or bottle to 2.6 volumes of CO2. Okay, onto the beer randomizer. Wait, we're not going to do a beer randomizer this week. I had a comment uh, on Reddit. Um, that someone rec recommended I put a poll or in the comments of this video um, people to propose the next style to cover. So if you would like to see a style covered next week, uh, put it in the comments and whoever gets the most likes, uh, that's the style that I'll review. And this, this poll will run till uh, Wednesday of next week and that's the style I'll do next. So I would also like to announce um, I'm doing a collaboration with Doing the Most. Uh, Doing the Most is a uh, another YouTube channel, mostly covers uh, meads and very creative meads. Uh, look out for that series here in the future. I'll put a link to their YouTube page. Check them out. They do they do some really creative stuff. Um, but we're fermenting or we're we're testing out two different recipes of Italian grape ale. Um, and I'll, in my video for that, I will go through some of the brewing process that I use for my test batches. It's a one gallon batch. I do have a one gallon rim system. Um, but look out for that video series here in the near future. I've already brewed it. It's fermenting away. It is a lager, which is not an ale, but um, I think I've got a good idea of what I wanted to do with that. Uh, beer, wine, not really sure what it is, um, but I think it'll be a creative video, a little bit different um, stray from my normal videos. So check that out here in the near future. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. And I don't know the style, but you tell me. Bye-bye. This episode is brought to you by the Master Home Brewer Program. Earn awards and badges based upon how you score in home brewing competitions across the world. Sign up now at ciailers.org.